Hey guys, it's your freaking favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. And today we'll talk about convalescent plan as a treatment option for COVID-19. With that said, now let's get started. I have a previous video called questions and answers about COVID-19. Question, what are the phases of a pandemic? There is the inter-pandemic phase, start usually by animal transmission, and then human-to-human -human transmission, and then widespread human-to-human -human transmission, and then this is the peak, post-peak, and then the post-pandemic period. And after that, you are getting ready for another freaking pandemic. But what are the phases of an infection? Here's the infection. I got infected. I have an incubation period, which is the period of time between the point of infection and the appearance of symptoms. This is called the prodromal phase. After that, I have the invasive phase. This is the actual illness. This is the severity. Until I reach the peak or the zenith, I love this word, or the apex of the illness, and then decline of what? Of the illness. After that, convalescence, which means recovery. Yay, cool, but what if we can take some antibodies from me because I've recovered and I have formed some antibodies against the freaking virus and then give, give these antibodies to another patient who actually needs them so that his response against the virus is gonna be stronger and faster. This is the actual idea behind convalescence plasma. Before we talk about COVID-19, let's go back to square one. How to conquer disease in general. We have primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. Primary prevention is the actual prevention. You're trying to decrease the instance. How? Avoidance, herd immunity, and vaccines. Why herd immunity? Let's say that this is the infected person. And let's say that I'm here. I'm healthy. Okay? And these are the people who are immune in the community. Like that. Even though the patient in the center is infected, he's not going to be able to infect me because these people around him are immune. This is herd immunity in the community. Next is vaccines. Vaccines is when we introduce the actual pathogen, such as the virus, into your body. Why would you do this? Because this pathogen has to be potent enough so that your immune system can recognize it, but not potent enough for you to actually get infected. So that when you get exposed to the actual freaking virus in the future, your response will be stronger and faster because you have previous memory. Secondary prevention or screening, early detection and diagnosis, isolation, contact tracing, tertiary prevention, which is the actual treatment, prophylactic therapy, therapy, and rehabilitation. Convalescent plasma is here, it's a therapy. Don't forget that tertiary prevention usually does not affect incidence or prevalence. There is some exception. If it's a chronic disease and the therapy is managing and maintaining the patient instead of dying, for instance, let's say in the past, disease X used to kill patients within one year. But now, thanks to modern medicine, we can maintain these patients for 10 years. What's going to happen to the prevalence of disease X? It's going to increase. Some online bloggers will argue the prevalence of chronic diseases is increasing in the society, therefore there has to be something fundamentally wrong with the system. Maybe, or just maybe that you are so fixated on a freaking number on a spreadsheet rather than actual flesh and blood human beings. Jeffrey Pence 27. We have two types of immunity, innate and adaptive or acquired. Innate is non-specific, adaptive or acquired is specific. And since it is specific, it's more potent. Innate is present at birth, adaptive or acquired, you acquire it after birth. Innate has no memory. It really doesn't matter whether you are exposed to this antigen for the first time, second time, third time or fourth time. But here it, there is memory. The second exposure is way different from the first exposure because your response in the second exposure is stronger and faster than that of the first exposure because you have an immune memory. The response to foreign invaders is the same in cases of innate immunity. For example, the cilia in your trachea, known as the mucociliary escalator. They do not care whether the antigen is nicotine, tar, tobacco, a pea, piece of plastic or a coin, the response is the same. We're trying to beat it and get rid of it upwards, like push it upwards. However, adaptive or acquired immunity, the response is different depending on the invader. Examples of acquired immunity is the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes are the one that secretes the antibodies. 
So what's the idea behind convalescent plasma? Here is patient A has been exposed to SARS-CoV-2. He developed COVID-19. He developed acquired immunity against the freaking virus. His B lymphocytes stopped being so naive. They matured and they grew the hell up. Now they are mature, they will become plasma cells. Plasma cells will secrete antibodies and the B lymphocytes will also become memory B so that in the future, the next response is gonna be stronger and faster and that's how you develop immunity. What if we can get these doozy antibodies from patient A and give them to patient B who does not have memory so that we can help them with the disease? This is the idea behind convalescent plasma. Types of immunity, innate and adaptive. Adaptive is further subdivided into naturally acquired and artificially acquired. Each one is divided into passive and active. Passive, naturally acquired antibodies passing from mommy to baby through the placenta if the baby is a fetus or through breast milk if he's an infant. Active, naturally acquired immunity, antigens that enter your body naturally. Now you are being exposed to the bacteria or to the virus and the body will form antibodies. Artificially acquired passive immunity, this is preformed antibodies. This is the antiserum. This is the convalescent plasma. Active artificially acquired adaptive immunity is vaccines. We actually give you the freaking virus or bacteria, and then you will develop immunity again. So it's active because you did the heavy lifting. But when we give you the preformed antibody from a previous patient, you were not active, you're just passive. Convalescent plasma is a subtype of a topic called anti-serum. But what is serum? For us to understand serum, we need to understand plasma first. For us to understand plasma, you need to understand blood. What is blood? Blood contains plasma, 55% of blood, and 45% cells. What cells? Red blood cells, white blood cells, and freaking platelets. So these are the cells here. How about here? The plasma. What, what does it have? Water, of course, and proteins, albumin and globulin. So when a nurse or a doctor gets a blood sample from you, here is your blood. When you leave it alone to sit, it will sediment. Red blood cells will go down. And then you have a buffy coat, which is white blood cells and platelets, and then the plasma on the top. That was plasma. What's the difference between plasma and serum? Serum is defibrinated plasma. If you leave the blood to clot and the clot to contract, it will release very fine fluid called serum. So serum is plasma minus the clot. Here is the plasma, remove the clot, remove the fibrin, and then you get a serum. I've made a video before about the difference between serum and plasma. Your blood contains blood cells and plasma. Blood cells are red blood cells on the buffy coat. The buffy coat is white blood cells plus platelets. So your whole blood is red blood cells plus white blood cells plus platelets plus plasma, which has coagulation factors, which is the clot plus serum. Here is your blood, here is your plasma, here is the serum and the clotting factor. The serum is the one that contains the actual antibodies. Serum is a defibrinated plasma, plasma without fibrin. Now, anti-serum. Hey, why would you be anti-serum? Don't you want to be pro-serum? Listen, big boy, you didn't get it. It's not that I'm anti-serum. It, it's a serum that contains antibodies. Antiserum definition human or non human serum that contains preformed antibodies. Goal to provide artificially acquired passive immunity, which is different from active immunity of vaccines. Uses convalescent serum, which is you get antibodies from an immune donor and give it to a non immune recipient. Example is Ebola treatment. Antiserum treatment has worked beautifully for Ebola. 7 out of 8 cases improved. Antitoxins, same freaking thing. They are antibodies. Antivenoms are antisera. So we're trying to use antiserum to treat COVID-19, but we need to establish that it actually works. So we need clinical trials. Phase 1, healthy volunteers. Phase 2, we try it on patients with the disease. Phase 3, patients, even a larger number, and we divide them into two groups, placebo to one group and the actual antiserum to another group to see whether the antiserum works better than placebo or not. And then phase four is the post-marketing surveillance. Which one is the most important? All of them are important, but in my humble opinion, phase four is the most important because this is where you actually know whether it's a good idea or a bad idea because by then, many, many, many people have tried it. So what are we trying to accomplish in phase one? Is the drug safe? How about phase two? Is it effective? Phase three, is it better than the alternatives? Phase four, should it continue? Should it stay on the market? And sometimes we do it double-blinded, 
placebo controlled with cross over or cross switching. How do you cross over? So first let's divide them into two groups. Group A will get the placebo, group B will get the actual drug. And then halfway in through the study, you actually switch them without telling them. So when it comes to convalescent plasma for COVID-19, they studied 5,000 hospitalized patients and we're done with the first phase. It is safe. Now let's answer the next question. We need more studies. But let me ask you a question, Medicosis. Let's say that you are severely ill with COVID-19 and your doctor suggested convalescent plasma. Will you take it? The answer is yes. But but it's, it's, it's not like past phase four clinical trial yet. Yeah, because in an urgent situation, you don't have that luxury. So you go with what's available to you right now. What determines patients' eligibility for use of convalescent plasma for COVID-19? In other words, who should get the treatment, who should not get it? Why not give it to just everybody? Because the first lesson of economics is scarcity. There is never enough of anything to fully satisfy all those who want it. So we have to ration. Since we have a limited supply, we should actually use it for patients who are severely ill. So here are the criteria. We need a lab-confirmed COVID-19 infection. I think, doctor, I kind of, sort of, ish have COVID-19. Ah, uh, it's not going to work. We need to have it lab-confirmed. Severe life-threatening COVID. What do you mean by severe life-threatening? SOB, which stands for shorts of breath, because I'm a good guy, I don't curse. Tachypnea. Oh, so what's the difference between shorts of breath and tachypnea? Because tachypnea is rapid breathing. Uh, this is a symptom. This is a sign. This is something that the patient complain of. But this is a sign that the doctor can verify by counting breaths per minute. And it's actually easy. You distract the patient by pretending to take his pulse while you are actually measuring the number of breaths per minute. Why not just tell the patient that you are measuring his breaths per minute? Because when the patients are aware that you are counting their breaths per minute, they will alter it. Oxygen saturation less than 93%, lung infiltrates greater than 50% within one to two days, and of course, informed consent. If you want to learn more about pharmacology and treatment, I have an antibiotics course on my website, have 40 videos. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. Please support me here or here. You can go to my website to get my courses. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.